This is The Weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmuth. Good morning and welcome to The Weekly. I'm Justin Warmuth. And this morning we're joined by Orange County Supervisor of Elections, Bill Cowles. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Uh, a big next week and a half or so, well, this is airing on Sunday, so really a week and a couple days, uh, as folks start to go to the polls, early voting, mail-in ballots, all that. Let's go over some of the housekeeping of what uh, voters uh, in Orange County and really across Central Florida need to know as, as they head to the, to the ballot box. Well, we're right now in the middle of the second method of voting because vote-by-mail ballots were sent out early October and again, vote by mail it has to be in the elections office by 7 p.m. election night. Mm -hmm. Early voting is going on, and with early voting in Orange County and several of the counties, we're going all the way up to the Sunday before the election. Some other counties are on the Saturday, but you still have time to go to an early voting site, and the beauty of that is you can go to any site in the county and vote. And then finally, November 8th, we mm -hmm. kick off the big one, Election day, you have to go to your polling place. All right, so mail-in ballots, let's start there. Um, so if someone requests one, they have one in their possession, when is the absolute final day to put that into the mail so it can get to the Supervisor of Elections office and be counted? The post office has told us that it'll give them at least five days, okay. six days before the election if you're going to take it and put it into the mail system because in Florida, a postmark does not count. It physically has to be in the elections office. So the best thing to do is all of the uh, early voting sites mm -hmm. in Orange County and many of the counties have the secure ballot intake stations where you can drop off your ballot to an election official and know that it's gonna be turned in on time and processed. So if you want to mail it in, really, you should do it tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday maybe at the latest, but really get it done earlier because let's talk about uh, Florida law. You, if, if there is an issue, maybe with a signature or something else, they, that can then be fixed in time, correct? Correct. The uh, legislature put in the cure affidavit process. Mm -hmm. So if your signature doesn't match based on the comparison to the signature on record, or, and it's hard to believe, people will open their ballot, mark their ballot, put it in the envelope, even put their return address on the front side, and they never signed the envelope. Mm. So the cure process allows you to do an affidavit that then updates your record, which will allow your ballot to be counted. The good news is you have until 5 p.m. the Thursday after the election mm. to get the affidavit in in order for your ballot to count. Got it. Okay, so uh, vote, what's, has anything really changed? So if someone, you know, I, I know registered Republicans, registered Democrats voted in the primary, uh, but we have a, a new crop of voters who have not cast a ballot since 2020. In the state of Florida, what has changed for their process, whether it is in-person voting? Has anything changed that you believe they need to know about before they go and either vote by mail, early vote, or go on November 8th? Well, last night was the deadline to request a ballot to be mailed to you. Okay. So at this point, if you need a ballot, a vote by mail ballot, you'll have to go to the elections office and pick one up. But if you're going to the elections office, why don't you just go ahead and early vote while you're sure. there and it's done and you know your ballot's been cast. So again, the vote by mail, if you have one, you can take it to an early voting site mm -hmm. and have it canceled so you can vote in person, mm -hmm. put it in the mail. But the key thing is, if you're expecting to have gotten one, the legislature changed it to where a request is only good for one election cycle. And so you may have been voting previously, mm -hmm. but that request may have expired. So from that standpoint, now go vote in person. Okay. Now, if someone is dropping off mail-in ballots, how many can they drop <laughs> off? Let's go over some of the numbers because I know that that is... Um, a change. A change a little bit, so let's go over that. So first you can turn in your own. Okay. You can bring two other voters' ballots back. Then you can also bring back your family members, and the law defines who family members are. So basically it's yours plus two not re associated or related to you, okay. and then your family members. And so we have to monitor that right. uh, at each of the sites where you can drop off a ballot. Now it's manned, right? Was that 
previously? Was that already a, a thing in Orange County? Well, it was something you always wanted to have, Correct. have right. assistance on yeah, that. Yeah. But yes, the legislature requires that they be manned, or you've got to have cameras. And like our main building, we have a camera, we have a security guard, and we have somebody sitting outside, uh, even into late hours uh, after early voting has ended. Uh, the legislature decided that if they were found to be unstaffed, mm -hmm. it's a $25,000 fine on the supervisor of elections, and it's personal. And that's something that you're not trying to pay. I don't want that. So has I'm going to make sure i got three people. So if one has to go to the bathroom right. or one wants to go eat, we still got people there. I, listen, in this day and age, I know that you, I don't have to tell you that there are people that are not associated with the state of Florida or elections that are looking for things, looking for issues to point to. Yeah, the, one of the things that came out of the legislative session is the more transparency. Mm -hmm. So now our office has observers who are down observing our signature verification process. We have observers who are down watching the ballot duplication mm -hmm. uh, process. Uh, they have public coming to our canvassing board meetings. So the transparency, poll watchers at the polling place and early voting. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot more scrutiny being put onto us here in Florida that we've not had before. But transparency is good. Uh, disinformation and, and conspiracy theories are not. Uh, just to refresh our viewers about what happened in 2020 in the state of Florida, it was a pretty flawless execution, would you say? Oh, we were praised across the right. country because we, here we are, the third largest state, mm -hmm. once considered a swing state, and we had uh, Trump won Florida by 3%, which is a big victory as in how the elections have been mm -hmm. going in Florida. And so we were being praised for all the good things mm -hmm. we did. And then the legislature and the governor said, but we want to tighten things up so that we continue to be mm -hmm the model for mm -hmm. the country. Now, another important thing I want to point out um, is that each state uh, has its own election rules. So I know that you probably get inundated with, hey, what about this? What about that? That is not necessarily something that Florida will do or has on the books, right? Well, can we go over some of those and, and the questions that you've been answering for voters across Orange County? Yeah, so um, the big one is the fact that our Constitution says Tuesday, November 8th is the election day. 50 states write their own rules. Mm -hmm. And everybody's come to Florida from someplace else. Mm -hmm. And so they bring with them how that was in their home state. So we hear things like that the no solicitation zone at 150 is too short because in Tennessee it's 300. But in Pennsylvania, it's only 10 feet from the front door. And so we get these complaints about mm -hmm. the solicitation type thing. Um, vote by mail, as we talked about, the deadline in Florida is 7 p.m. In other states, they can take them up to X amount of days after the election if they were postmarked. postmarked so we don't yeah. have that. Uh, other states uh, allow the, the vote by mails to be counted after the polls close. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and here in Florida, uh, we're one of those, we're a now society. We want our results now. It's and so important you point that out because uh, that's, that's, that was really the, the issue and, and the delay with the 2020 presidential election is that all of the vote by mail ballots, really in a lot of other states, are counted after the day of. Those were already counted and really your job that day was to in the state of Florida, really, all, all election supervisors and poll workers uh, were that they were counting the votes that were cast that day. That's why things were answered so quickly, and that's why I think I don't know. I don't want to get in the minds of some people. They're like, why did Florida have it all complete when other states are still counting ballots after the fact? And that's that's one of those misinformation, disinformation, trying to clear some things up. And we're going to clear up some more when we come back with Orange County Supervisor of Elections, Bill Cowles. We hope you stay with us. This is The Weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmuth. Welcome back to The Weekly. I'm Justin Warmuth, and we're joined by Orange County Supervisor of Elections, Bill Cowles, as we continue to bring you uh, key information on the upcoming midterm election. And, and we were just talking about why Florida gets these results in so quickly as opposed to some other states that, that take it takes some time to count those mail-in ballots 
Why is that? Well, the way we get the results is Florida allows us to begin processing the vote by mails as they come in as much as 30 days prior to the election. So when we get to election day, we're just waiting for those last vote by mails to come through the front mm -hmm. door. The early voting ends on Sunday night, so we have 100% of those. Mm -hmm. So when we go to push out the results on election night, 100% of early voting, and usually about 90 to 95% of the vote by mails are out there. And as soon as you see those numbers, you're seeing a pattern and now you're waiting for the polling places to modem their results in. Great point, because uh, I know a lot of people, when they watch on, on Tuesday night, next Tuesday night, uh, and they see the initial results start to come in, it's, it's easy to kind of have a knee-jerk reaction here, but they have to realize which votes are going out first, and, and the precincts reporting is so important, but also knowing which votes were already cast and already pushed out, and those were the early voting, and those were the, the vote by mail, and then it gets to the day off. Great point. Um, anything else you want to add on that? Just that it reflects the methods of voting now. We, you know, yeah. Florida, we have flipped how voters vote. Mm -hmm. And so vote by mail is now number one. Early voting is number two. And going to the polling place is number three. Mm -hmm. So you're getting the biggest chunk of the results mm -hmm. early. Got it. All right, so um, disinformation surrounding elections. I know it's something that uh, your office and really offices uh, across the country have been trying to debunk some myths and be as transparent as you can if, I mean, you are already transparent before, but really hyper-focused on that. So uh, I, I want to clear up a few things. Um, if you have a, if you leave a race blank, that does not mean that your ballot will not be counted for the races you voted for. Absolutely right. You, the voter, gets to decide what you want to vote on. And so it's called an undervote mm -hmm. in that contest. And every election, there are undervotes and there are overvotes where people voted for more than the one choice. Mm -hmm. And those ballots still get counted uh, even if you don't fill everything in. I'm going to get to some more, but I, I feel like this is a good time to, to bring up that the in Orange County, uh, there were a, a few uh, charter amendments that, that folks were voting on. Um, transportation tax, that was one. Uh, rent stabilization, though, uh, some, some big information coming down for voters if they haven't already cast their ballots or if they have already cast their ballots. Let's go over that and, and what was uh, just decided. Okay, so uh, on Thursday night uh, before this show, uh, the uh, Fifth District Court of Appeals said that the state rent stabilization should not go forward, pushed it back to the local court to decide how to handle the results of what has already been done. Bottom line is we will be putting notices out to voters who have not voted in the voting booth on early voting or on election day just saying that that question on rent stabilization has been removed unless the county appeals this, mm. then it could keep it on there. So there's but the ballots slogan, are already printed, right? But ballots are printed, yeah. and so uh, we'll see what comes out. I think what will come out is telling us, the elections office, not to certify mm. the results but it does not do anything to the ballots that have already been turned in and have already been processed. Good to hear. All right. Um, good to hear about the, that part of it, not necessarily what you know, folks at home have their own um, you know, feeling on that, right. on that piece of legislation. But uh, let's go to uh, this one. If you wear campaign merchandise, T-shirt, hat, whatever, you'll be turned away. Is that a, is that a myth? Not true in Florida. Mm -hmm. Florida, you the voter, can wear campaign materials, buttons, stickers when you go into the polling place, early voting or election day. The poll workers have to be nonpartisan. Mm -hmm. Any poll watchers there to observe must be nonpartisan, uh, and so they don't. But voters can go in with all campaign buttons, stickers, and all. It's a polarizing time, uh, not just in political environment, obviously, but but really around elections. It hasn't, I don't know if it's ever been so polarizing um, and contentious. And uh, I'm, I'm wondering, I'm curious if it was difficult to find poll workers based on just what the, what's been said and some of the actions across the country and some other states, was it difficult to find people to man the polls? Yeah, so far in Florida, we have not seen stuff that we have heard from other states. Right, right. Uh, and again, I think it comes down to uh, the political environment by county. Mm. Uh, here in Orange, we haven't seen it. 
And one of the things that has been very helpful to us is we have an adopt a precinct program where groups adopt the polling place as poll workers, and uh, that has brought us a lot of poll workers. But we've not seen the contentious nature at this point. Security will be on hand, though, um, at, as it always is, right? Well, we have a poll deputy okay. who is outside, but he's not a sworn law enforcement officer who is observing everything outside the polling place, the poll clerk inside, and if there is an issue, then they know how to contact us, and then we'll contact the necessary authorities for any in issues going on outside. So, so no, no issues trying to find polling places, no issues trying to find poll workers in Orange County. Bottom yeah, line. We're, we're good. Uh, after the hurricane, yeah, we've only had factor. to change one polling place mm. uh, because it's still wet uh, on that. But that voters have already been mailed a personal notice to tell them about the change. How have you, and, and your office in particular, how have you been trying to um, fight these conspiracy theories about how elections are run? Well, we've tried to be good with our promotion of our information, like the sample ballots had information about the voting, uh, promoting it through the website, mm -hmm. through me being a speaker at community events. Uh, all. And then actually our poll workers become our best in ambassadors yeah. going out and telling people about how the process works. And so again, is that answering questions and trying to explain mm -hmm how Florida does it versus the rest of the country. That's, I mean, I want to, that's so important to hammer on. And if folks are just now joining us, not every state is run the same way. In fact, it's, it, it's run pretty differently. Uh, some states, you know, especially with the counting of the ballots, but, but really we have so many people moving here every day. And I, I think that was a, a great point that you made that they have, this might be their first time voting in the state of Florida. Uh, and, and so, just to understand Florida's laws uh, is is critical. Uh, it's that's part of that's part of the research that you should do. Not only on the races, the candidates, and what have you, but how elections are run in the state of Florida. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, we work hard to educate them with with our communication mm -hmm. and. Hopefully, our poll workers help them through the process. Okay. Uh, as an Orange County voter, <clears throat> this is a question for me and me, me alone. Do we have any information on perhaps a new logo on the sticker? Uh, I like the sticker. I do like the sticker. I'm just, you know, a variety, just to switch it up a little bit. Uh, we'll probably do that in 2024. Ooh, so so we're staying with the I did vote. And it has yeah. all the icons of the area in it, but uh, we'll probably be uh, changing it up the next time. <laughs> I, uh, I threw that. That was just some. I was like, oh, uh, the sticker's great. Okay. Not complaining about the sticker, just curious about that. But yeah. Bill cool. Cows, we appreciate it. Um, and for more information on the topics we discussed, some of the key dates that we discussed as we get closer to the midterm election, just head to clickorlando.com slash weekly. I'm Justin Mormont for Bill Cows. We hope you have a great Sunday.